Hey everyone. All right, let's go ahead and, and get started. Um, well, welcome to our, our new features webinar. We're super excited to have you on the call today and even more excited to walk through all of the amazing things added to Blackthorn Payments. So um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna say probably most people on the call have been using payments for a while now. So if you have, go ahead and uh, take a little coffee break. I'm gonna just do a quick overview of our app um, and then jump into the new features. So we launched payments in November of 2016. So about a year and a half, um, we are over 500 customers and growing around 30 to 40 each month. Um, huge increase and it's super exciting to see. Uh, the app is free to use, works with any object, and um, as most of you know, can, can be installed within three minutes through that the setup wizard. Um, like the title says, again, it's a complete payment processing app. Um, allows you to originate and process payments all within Salesforce. Um, you can accept cards, ACH, uh, for those of you who don't know, ACH, Automated Clearinghouse, just a fancy term for moving payments electronically um, in your bank. Um, so instead of collecting card information, you're collecting the person's account number and routing number. Um, we're gonna be coming up soon having European direct debit networks like SEPA, Apple Pay on the web, and Alipay as well. So the payment processing system that we use is Stripe. Uh, if you've not heard of Stripe, think PayPal, Authorize.net, uh, Braintree. It's an online payment processing system. Um, it's the only one we work with. We get that question a lot. Uh, we don't plan to add any other payment processing system um, within our roadmap. But using Stripe, um, you're able to process payments in 135 currencies, um, so yeah. Uh, with that said, I'm going to go right into our, our new features. So the first that we're really excited to talk about is Stripe Connect. Um, it allows you to receive funds for products or services and then pay people for, for those products and services. Um, it's all done through routing funds. Um, there's a payouts engine where you can automatically pay out or um, manually set payouts uh, to your connected accounts. There's an onboarding feature. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just click on this link and kind of walk through some of the illustrations that, that Stripe has for us. Um, they do a really good job of showing the different routing payments. For example, one of their major customers is Lyft, uh, the ride service. So for them, it's an on-demand, right? You have a one-to-one -one rider to driver. Um, there's many other different types of routing payments, including one-to-many. Um, so accepting a charge and then splitting it out between multiple third parties. You also have a um, many-to-many relationship as well. Um, so really, really great features. And for us, we have been, we've created this so it all integrates, um, excuse me, it all originates within Salesforce and everything can be controlled there. Um, if you are interested in Stripe Connect or want some more information, go ahead and shoot us an email at sales at blackthorn.io. So getting into the next feature, um, our virtual terminal. Uh, again, many people on the call have probably been wondering what's been going on. This is the third time that we've released this feature, um, and prior to it, it was Blackthorn Terminal. Um, what we're trying to do is just make, make our feature better um, for all of our customers. So with the virtual terminal, this is um, scalable. It's easier to use than what the Blackthorn Terminal was. Um, Lightning component works on any object. Um, you can add and remove sort fields, pre-populate fields, and then of course create and process charges, cards, and related records. Um, also a new, new item with this is it respects the running user's permissions. Um, so you can really configure this to your, your specific use case. Um, and after I go through these slides, I'll go ahead and demo each, each feature. I had to include a slide about communities. Um, it's one of our other popular questions and our virtual terminal now works. Um, nothing fancy, it's just straight to the point. Um, it's no setup necessary, so when you install the latest package, um, it will show up as a lightning component within the builder. Um, so yeah, we're, we're super excited about that one. Now the next three slides that I'm gonna go through is um, more of enhancements that we made to current objects and features. and what we had in mind is we wanted to give you a way to track your transactions, 
what transactions are available and your Salesforce balance compared to your Stripe balance. Um, it's just to provide some additional security that your Stripe and Salesforce are um, in sync and less number of times that you have to log into Stripe for, for those answers. So the first feature is our um, transaction rollups. Right away when you install the app and walk through the setup wizard and you select a parent object for your transactions, these fields get deployed automatically um, to that page layout. And again, as you, as you can see on the slide, it's pretty straightforward. It just captures what's going on with all related transactions. Now you have a related list, but at least this is shown on every single record and you can view it quickly to know what's going on. Um, another piece is the payment gateway balance. So we added several fields, again, automatically gets deployed when you install the latest package where you can see your Stripe balance available and pending, and then also your Salesforce check-in balance, just making sure everything is matching. Um, a cool feature we added with this is the calculate Salesforce balances from. So of course, if you are upgrading and you have prior balances from, from Salesforce, adding in that date is going to bring everything back up and make it match. So cool feature there. And then last is our available on. Um, transactions that um, are captured do get captured immediately and are pulled from the customer's card. Um, but in Stripe, they handle it a little bit differently where there's a pending balance and an, an available balance. And right away, um, it goes into that pending balance for a couple days before it's available to pay out to yourself through an account. Um, and so we added that additional information here in Salesforce, uh, which I'll go ahead and show here in a little bit. And so payment schedules, it's, it's not a new feature, um, but every once in a while we would just like to go over an existing feature that we, we want you guys to know more about, um, especially if you're not using it um, or don't know how to use it entirely. So payment schedules, um, you can relate it to any object. You can create schedule transactions. We provide, um, as you can kind of see in this picture, an easy preset value. Um, so it takes seconds to, to create a recurring schedule um, for anything related, you know, for example, to opportunities. Um, and then processing all the related transactions, you can set it up to auto capture. So it's almost a set it and forget it. Um, we also have another option with our pay link add-on where you can have the customer control, you know, you send them a link and then they, they pay for it and it updates the whole payment schedule, again, setting and forgetting. Um, yeah, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the demonstration. Please feel free as I'm, as I'm walking through to ask any questions. I, I believe I, yeah, I have enabled QA for you guys. So go ahead and, and address those. I will try to answer them while I'm demoing, but if I don't get to it, we'll, we'll get to it at the end. Okay, so the first one that I'm gonna show here is our um, virtual terminal. So let me go ahead, um, you'll see this is just enlightening. I added the virtual terminal as a side component to an opportunity, and I'm gonna refresh to show you how our pre-populating process works. So as you can see, when the record loads, it loads in the related to, which is the account. Um, I also included a custom field um, called example data. I pre-populated the value from there, and I also pre-populated the amount field. So uh, super easy to set up. You're not having to configure a, a file anymore if anybody attempted with Blackthorn uh, Terminal, and it's super easy to get set up. Um, Again, I'll just kind of go through an example. So a payment method, you can either select an existing or add new. We can just do a test description. Capture now, currency, and process. I'll let that load here really quick. So like I said, um, there we go, perfect. So. Again, the transaction was captured, um, all the related fees, um, my test description came over, so did my example data value. Um, very easy to, to navigate through and, and capturing transactions for opportunities or any objects that you select. Um, with the communities, um, which I'm super excited to show, is the builder. Um, now, please excuse, it's, it's not the, the 
prettiest <laughs> community, um, but I'm, I'm more so worried about the functionality of it and showing you guys. So a community page, I'm gonna go to an opportunity. And within the opportunity, I'm gonna launch the virtual terminal. And again, same thing. It pre-populates the related to, the example data, the amount. And um, what's really awesome is that when you have a community user logging in, if you don't want them to have access to changing the amount, um, access to the related to, the parent object, any field within this virtual terminal, you can update their permissions and it will honor that within the virtual terminal, um, which just makes it easier for you guys to um, get this deployed right away and have your customers complete their transactions. So again, I'll just go ahead and show um, an example and we'll just do 200. Okay, and just going back again, so viewing the transaction object from a community page, as you can see, everything captured, um, and then obviously related back to that opportunity. So super simple um, and very powerful to use. Um, the next that I'm gonna show you here is the payment gateway. And so, like I said, when you upgrade and or have a fresh install of Blackthorn Payments, um, the balance fields and section are automatically going to get deployed um, to the payment gateway record. So you can see all of the balances. <clears throat> there is a scheduled job that runs every hour that automatically updates these fields, um, but you can manually update them by clicking update balance. Um, again, we've, we've created a way that you can, you know, complete an action um, in multiple ways. We also have, um, like I said, I can't really show an example, but if I did a calculate sales, Salesforce balance from, I would just update this to my first transaction um, in Salesforce and then hit save, update the balances, and everything will sync correctly. So there's that feature. Um, in addition, so for a transaction, um, the available on and balance status. Anytime that you capture a transaction, those fields will automatically populate. So if you wanted to you know, create reports based on when transactions or monies are gonna be available in your account, um, you can easily do that with all transactions and a criteria of the available on and or balance status. Um, they both relate to one another. Um, yeah, so that was a quick, quick demo. And then last but not least, uh, the payment schedule. So I already created a payment schedule for an example. Um, but let's just run through one together just so I can show you how easy. Um, biggest thing to keep in mind is you don't have to always manually create the payment schedule, right? This can be done through a process builder. So if you have an opportunity where you need to um, have the customer pay for a recurring uh, schedule or a payment schedule, you can do it through a process builder to automatically create that payment schedule. It would create all the recurring transactions or related transactions if you have a payment method on file, it would add that to the transaction, and then based on the due date, it would automatically capture. Um, so super powerful um, feature that we have. We'll go ahead and just do um, a monthly payment schedule. We'll start it tomorrow. Um, I don't need to add an end date just because I'm gonna do a count of 12 months. I'm just gonna do an example. And this description does roll down to all of the transaction descriptions. Each amount, I'm just gonna do 400, but say the initial amount, you have like $150 processing fee or, or something that's initial. Don't have to fill in the total amount, that'll get calculated. And then just for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a payment method. Now the way it works is the schedule status, you can set it to draft if you're still working on it, um, but once you set it to generate, that's when it's gonna create all the related transactions and set them up to queue if they're ready to auto process. So we're gonna generate our transactions. Um, you can relate them to accounts, contacts. Opportunity is my transaction parent and it deploys automatically onto this payment schedule after the setup wizard. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Awesome, so a couple other things that are, is built in for the payment schedule. You'll see that it filled out the total amount, um, and then we have some status fields, right? So your balance due, balance paid, um, payment status. So if any transactions ever fail, 
or the related payment method is invalid, this payment status will update to, um, it could, it'll be, you know, failed to collect, partially paid. It gives you a status of, of how your account is doing or your schedule is doing, excuse me. Um, and then let me go ahead to the related list. And as you can see, all the transactions have been created with due dates, payment method, and then of course the process date will fill in once it is auto captured. So, so that is the information on payment schedules. Um, that ends our, our demo. Uh, I kind of went through it super fast. Um, like I said, you can go to the app exchange right now and install the latest version. And then everybody did receive a, an announcement email about a week and a half ago with instructions on how to upgrade. Um, fairly straightforward, but if you do run into any issues, obviously go ahead and, and contact us. Um, in addition to the new features, I was, I'm gonna also talk about our two apps that are coming up just, just briefly. Um, let me get back to our presentation. So events, um, our release date for this is projected at the end of quarter two. Um, again, I, I, we had a couple webinars on this um, late last year, and then we also have a, an events QA page. So um, we've been keeping up to date on this as, as good as we can, but it's part of the, the business cloud. Um, you're going to be using the payments and CPQ apps, um, and they all work together automatically. No integration, no customization work is needed. Um, Payments is primarily responsible for, transact, for the transaction money, and then the CPQ is primarily responsible for event checkouts. Um, so if you do want additional information on this, um, go ahead and email us at sales at blackthorn.io. Uh, and same with CPQ. So CPQ, we are um, projecting this to come out at the end of quarter two as well. Um, I know there's a couple people on the call that are anticipating this, so we're excited that we're getting close to, to our release date. Um, again, just working on a billing solution right now um, and advanced pricing and billing schedules. So again, send us an email if you, if you are interested in this. Um, last but not least, um, in addition to all of the new features, enhancements, and the long email that we sent to you guys um, with an announcement last week, um, we did edit, um, change up our support plans a little bit. Um, we really wanted to focus on how we could help you guys um, the best especially with, I mean, with any app. Um, so we have added new support plans um, and kind of broke out everything of what's included in the plan. Um, and I would definitely suggest taking a look at this. Um, the team, between the team and small business is our, our popular support plan that we, that we give out. So um, take a look at this. And of course, if you have any questions, submit a case to us and we'll, we'll be happy to answer that for you. So. I guess we didn't need an hour. <laughs> I, I, I kind of went through that pretty fast. So if there are any um, questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll just start addressing them for the last um, five to 15 minutes. Otherwise, I really appreciate you guys joining um, our webinar. Please download the app and, and start working on those, on those new features. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out.